Welcome to another video of my NIM SDL2 Game Development for Beginners video series number 3 adding AABB Rectangular Collision Detection. In this video I will explain AABB Axis Align Bounding Box Collision and implement it so that when trying to move through a wall type object we will instead get stopped. First off what is AABB? AABB is a form of collision detection. This collision detection works by comparing the sides of rectangle 1 to the sides of rectangle 2 to determine if they are overlapping. If these two rectangles are overlapping that means that we have a collision. Also note axis aligned part means that the rectangles in question are not rotated in any way. If you wanted to detect such collision you would require the use of some annoying mat. It might be your first good fun use of all your mat that you have learned or are still learning at school. Here is a sample code of how AABB works. Here we have two rectangles, rect1 and rect2, that we made using sdl.rect object type. And here is the AABB collision detection. And here is the explanation that I will go through more in detail later. Now to explain how this works, let's draw these two rectangles. We are going to do all the work underneath the rendering drawing of our player and walls code. First, we will initialize the two rectangles using the rect object type from SDL and then render the first one with red color and then the second one with blue color. First, I will comment out this code so it won't happen just yet and cut this and navigate down below to the rendering. Then before we can draw any of these two rectangles, we must set the draw color of the renderer to the color we want the rectangles to be. So we will do this for each of the two rectangles. First for rect1, which will be red, this will set the draw color to red. Remember that this proc set render draw color takes four arguments of red, green, blue, and alpha in hex. 0x00 means 0 and 0xff means 255. So to set the draw color to red, we must set the first argument to 0xff and the alpha to 0xff, which is 255 as well. Otherwise, it will be invisible, completely transparent. Then we render the rectangle using the following code. This proc render draw rec takes the renderer for its first argument, which I wrote in this style, and then it takes a pointer to rec type variable for which we use addr to give the pointer to our rect1 because we're not using our custom written render proc which does this for us but is written for image type variables so we had to use addr manually. Now let's repeat the process by copy pasting the above code and changing the color values to blue and the render draw rect argument to rect2. Now let's run this f6. Here we go. We have drawn two rectangles in the top left of the window, the smaller blue one inside the larger red one, showcasing that the, these two are overlapping. So now we will use the above AABB collision code to detect this overlap. So let's add the above AABB code to detect if these two rectangles we have drawn are colliding. Let's put the code right after drawing rendering of these two rectangles. Now let's run this F6. Here we go. We are getting spammed collision detected. Now let's change the coordinates of the smaller blue rectangle, rect2, so that it is no longer inside the bigger red rectangle, rect1. So let's change the x70 to 170 and rerun this. F6. Here we go. No collision detected message and the rectangle is drawn outside. Let's also add an else statement just in case so that we can see that output of no collision as well. And run this. Here we go, no collision. We can now comment out all the rectangle code as it has served its purpose of demonstrating AABB. Now for part two of this video, I'm going to create a new procedure called collision AABB, which will take two arguments. First a player object for rect1 equivalent, and then a sequence of type wall, sec wall for its rect2 equivalent. And then we're going to use this procedure to detect AABB collision between the player object and all the wall type objects whenever we will move. And once it will detect collision, we're going to get stuck in one of the walls because we will be overlapping with a wall type object. And since we're going to be checking for collision before moving, we won't be able to move anywhere since unmodified AABB collision has no direction or anything 
anything. I will explain AABB collision more in depth once we complete the collision AABB procedure. Now let's navigate up where we have all our procedures and let's add a new block comment under the last image procedure. Now here, let's write the base procedure, proc collision AABB, object one as player type and object two as a sequence of wall with return type of bool. The reason for return type of bool is because we will need to know the result of AABB collision detection so that if it detects it, we will no longer move. Now we will need to get the texture our wall type objects use. We will do that by accessing the first element of wall type objects images texture like this let wall is obg2 index 0 dot image i use the let keyword here because we won't be changing it for performance reasons next we will require a for loop that will go through iterate over every single wall type object inside the sequence of walls that we have passed to this procedure for w in object 2 Next, we insert the AABB code we used with our rectangles from before. Copy paste, tab it in, and the else again. First, we're going to add two return keywords of true and false for when the collision is detected and when it isn't. Simply put return true underneath echo collision detected, return true, and return false under echo, no collision, return false. We will again use the return bool type value of true or false to determine if we can move or not. Also, we must remove the else statement and position the return false outside of the for loop. Next, we need to rename the rect1 and rect2 variables with obg1 for rect1. So, the first instance of this also requires dot float 64 appended to it. So this one dot float 64 because the value it is comparing to is a float. Now all the remaining rect ones ending with dot w and dot h require dot image as well on top of being renamed to obg1 because we need to access their images texture which is where the dot w and dot h come from. So rect1 into obg1 dot image dot w and the same for this one down here with dot h obg1 dot image dot h. Then for rect2 we replace all the dot x and dot y instances with the iteration variable of w. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then all the instances with dot h and dot w of rect2 with wall, the texture we retrieved before the for loop. And lastly, all the variables ending with dot h and dot w need dot float 64 appended to them. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now the procedure is complete. So it is time for more in-depth explanation of the AABB collision. So I put the explanation in the comments, but I'll also read them to you. So line one, which is this one, checks if obg1 left side is to the left of the obg2 right side then line 2 checks if the obg1 right side is to the right side of obg2 left side and then line 3 checks if the obg1 top side is above the obg2 bottom side and then line 4 checks if the obg1 bottom side is below obg2 top side if all of them are true collision is detected now let's use this collision AABB procedure we have made down below in the movement code. So let's navigate down below. Here we go, the movement code. Now after every if statement of KBD scan code up, we're going to insert and in some code. So this is the code if collision AABB our procedure player for its first argument of obg1 and then for argument two walls which is which it takes a sequence of wall type objects which walls is and then if it's equal to false so no collision we can move otherwise we stop now let's repeat this now let's run this f6 here we go spamming no collision once we start moving and if we hit a top wall collision detected and we can no longer move because we're all lapping with the top wall we're inside it and because the code is checking if there is no collision so that we can move but because we have collision we can't move so let's test it with the other walls let's go to the right works again stuck and below also stuck and onto the left and stuck Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe as well as click the bell icon if you liked it. You can also follow me on Twitter of the same name and support me on Patreon. 
If you had any problems with any part of the video, let me know in the comment section. The code for this video is in the link in the description, as well as the link to this video's documentation, script, is a form of offline tutorial. Have fun!